Today we are getting real nerdy about a coffee tamper, but it is not just any old tamper. It uses hydroforming to tamp your coffee grounds. Let's talk about it. My name is Stephen Holm and I'm with Home Grounds. We're a place to help you brew and enjoy better quality coffee right at home. We make things like gear reviews, tutorials, recipes. So if you like that sort of stuff, be sure to subscribe and like this video so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. So like I said, today we are talking about a very special tamper. This is the Hydro Prep from Espazola. They're a Switzerland-based company, and I first heard about this product from a daily coffee news article. It has a lot of great basic information about it, so be sure to check that out. So we're gonna hop right into it. I do wanna say up front, this video is going to get very detailed and scientific. So if you like that sort of thing, great. We'll have plenty of information. If that's not your thing, that's totally fine. There will be chapters along this video, so you can just skip forward even just to my final conclusions at the very end of the video, but hopefully this information is helpful and some people enjoy it. I've actually got so much information that I am going to use my phone for notes, which I usually don't like to do, but we got a lot to cover today. Actually even, I'm gonna sit down. Now before hopping into the experiments and testing I did, what is this? So this is a tamper that works via hydroforming, which you can look into that on your own, but it's basically a process using manufacturing that uses the pressure of air to compress something onto a surface. That is probably a very bad way of saying it, but it's using plastic manufacturing, metals, a lot of different areas. So what this tamper is actually going to do is, instead of a classic tamper like this one here, which has a fully metal base and it's going to compress your coffee puck evenly all throughout and provide you with a nice flat puck at the end. This is going to apply even pressure throughout your entire puck, even if those areas are slightly different densities. Let me just read you some information from the founder about it. So this is from founder Alexander Senger. It is from the Daily Coffee News article. It says, in general, the best coffee puck is the one with even density and even thickness. This ideal, however, is not easy to achieve. Traditional tampers with a stiff base and a double dose basket will give you even thickness easily. So even thickness, meaning that throughout your basket, since we have the flat top and a flat bottom from the basket, we'll have even thickness throughout, though this comes at the cost of even density, which baristas try to avoid by preparing the coffee grounds prior to tamping with various techniques. With the hydro prep, you trade even thickness for even density. The puck, even in a flat double dose basket, won't necessarily have even thickness everywhere, but even density is easy to achieve. So I'm gonna throw up a video right now from the Hydro Prep website. Basically what we're doing here is we're taking a coffee puck in your basket and instead of compressing a flat surface onto it, we are using a surface that will mold to the density of your coffee puck. So you may have mounds, it will not be a perfectly even puck on the surface when you're looking at it, but all of the coffee grounds in there will have even density. I'm gonna throw up on screen here what the pucks actually look like after tamping. So you can see that with the standard tamper here with the flat bottom, you're getting a nice flat looking bed of coffee grounds going into your basket. So the water is going to hit that and hit this completely flat surface. Versus with the hydro prep, it's kind of hard to see on video, but there are actually little mounds and it's not perfectly flat on your puck, which is a little confusing at first. It was hard for me to wrap my head around and I was kind of hesitant about this whole idea, but I kind of gave into it after a while and we'll talk about that later. So now we're going to talk about an experiment I performed with this tamper and before even hopping into it, I have a couple things to say. First off, I am not a scientist and this was not a perfectly conducted scientific experiment. In fact, if you're going to complain about my scientific process or there are things that I could have done differently, then feel free to just ignore all of this, ignore my conclusions. These are things that I observed and that I felt like I could conclude out of my experiment, but if you don't agree with me, that's totally fine. I understand where you're coming from. I just wanted to perform this to hopefully give you a basic understanding of what this tamper is doing. 
Along the way, I'm also going to be totally upfront about things that I recognize were not perfect in my experiments. And I will also include chapters about every aspect of the experiment along the way. So if you wanna skip forward just to the conclusions of this or anywhere, feel free. Now onto the experiment. My overall goal of the experiment was to see how the hydro prep compares to a typical tamper. And now right away I knew that this whole experiment would be slightly flawed by some suspicions I had and those suspicions were confirmed by something on the hydro prep website which states that a puck prepared with the hydro prep has significantly different properties than a typical tamper. So you should experiment with finer grinds and possibly lower pressure for best results. So right away, take this experiment lightly because using this tamper does different things to an espresso puck than this tamper would. But hopefully we can gather some patterns that are happening when we switch to this tamper. So there were a few things that I really wanted to look into. First, is there any significant change in consistency from shot to shot using this tamper versus using the traditional standard tamper. Next, I wanted to take that same question and apply it across different distribution methods because a big claim about the hydro prep is that you don't really need any distribution with your coffee puck versus with these, we are doing so many different things to prepare our puck before even tamping because we want to get that relatively even density throughout the puck before applying this flat base Versus with this, they say, no, you don't have to do really any of that. Just use it and go. So I wanted to test some different distribution methods, say like a complete multiple step process versus absolutely nothing and see how the hydro prep performed. Lastly, I wanted to take a look at the shots pulling just visually because I had some suspicions as soon as I started using this of things that I noticed and I just wanted to be able to compare the shots directly next to each other visually on how they were pulling. We'll talk about that later. So finally, onto the actual experiment. I pulled 40 shots of espresso, so 20 with each tamper, which I know was not a lot of data points. I originally planned to do like 100, but I noticed very quickly patterns that were occurring, and this was taking a long time, and so I just cut it down to 40. So, you know, take this all lightly, but there definitely were patterns emerging very quickly. So for each of those shots, I gathered the dose, yield, time, TDS, and extraction of every single shot. Across those 40 shots, I had three different distribution techniques. The first distribution method was using palm tapping around the edge of the basket just to kind of help everything settle. And then I used a Pullman chisel for distribution and finally tamping. My second distribution method was just the palm tapping and then tamping. And then third, we just went directly from the grinder to tamping, so absolutely no distribution. So now I'm going to talk really quick about exactly how I went about this entire process, so how I dialed things in and how I calculated and measured everything. If you don't care about this, skip forward this amount of time. So I did this experiment at a coffee shop I occasionally work for, Lemon Jello's Coffee, here in Holland, Michigan. So thank you to them for letting me use their space after close. And first I dialed it in a coffee. I used a blend from Stovetop Coffee Roasters here in Michigan that I am familiar with and that I know is fairly consistent, so I felt comfortable using it for this experiment. My parameters that I dialed in were a 20 gram dose, 40 gram yield, and about 25 seconds. Not only were those numbers really easy to work with, but it also gave a great shot that was pretty delicious and one that I would be happy serving. I pulled two shots of espresso at the same time right next to each other using one from each tamper. And before that, I would dose out exactly 20.0 grams of coffee, do all the distribution or whatever tamping necessary and bring them over to the machine. After pulling the shots of espresso, I would set them aside and then pull another set until I had 10 total shots. So five from each tamper ready to measure the TDS. To measure TDS, I would take the oldest shots that I had pulled so they were nice and cooled down. I would stir those shots with a clean spoon 10 times, and then I would take a syringe, pump it back and forth in the espresso to make sure that there was no stratification of extraction levels. And then I would take a sample, push it through a clean syringe filter using five drops into a refractometer. 
that refractometer had been zeroed out using brew water from the espresso machine, which I know that there is some controversy of what you should zero out a refractometer with, but I don't really care for this experiment because I don't care about the exact numbers that I'm getting. So I don't care if I'm getting an 18% extraction level or 25. All that matters to me is that those numbers are all consistent with one another so we can see patterns. Now after I put the sample into the refractometer, I kept measuring until I received the same number three times in a row. And then I would clean out the refractometer with an alcohol wipe and repeat it all over again. After I had taken all of those 10 shots and measured them, I cleaned everything, sanitized everything, and did it again. There are a few things that I notice with the results that I would just want to mention for transparency sake that don't necessarily affect the final results, but just things that I noticed that you should take note of. I noticed right away watching all of my shots afterwards that every single shot pulled favored the right side of the basket slightly. So I'll throw out some footage of espresso being pulled and you can see that on the right side of the basket, there is a heavier flow of espresso coming out than on the left. And that could be from a couple things. The first one that I'm pretty sure it was is that the espresso machine in that cafe was not perfectly level. So it was maybe leaning slightly to the right. And so that's why the water was flowing and favoring the right side more. The other possibility is that I was just extremely consistently tamping harder on the left side. So the right side had less density every single time, which I doubt, but anyways. Finally, let's stop talking and take a look at the results and keep talking more. So I'll kind of quickly go over what we are seeing on the screen here. So I have red and blue sets. So the red is the standard tamper. The blue is the hydro or hydro prep. You can see that I have four sets and slightly different shades of each color based on the distribution method that I used. Now, the first two sets, I actually used the same distribution methods, but after the first set, I wanted to make sure that the actual groups that the espressos were pulling from weren't affecting the results at all. So let's say the middle group was either flowing faster or even the portafilter I was using for that one, the basket in it was designed slightly differently. I wanted to make sure that none of that was skewing my results. And so I did two data sets with the first distribution method, just swapping the tampers for each group head. The only major thing that changed between those first two sets was the average extraction percentage dropped by quite a bit. And that was probably because I was very stupid and recalibrated the refractometer from set one to set two and the water coming out of the machine, who knows, it could, could have been slightly different than when I originally zeroed it. So that was another mistake in this experiment, but you know, we're learning and I don't think that affected the results at the end. So just know that when we take a look at some charts later on that I combine those two data sets for some of them just to make things easier and better to look at. Now a couple things that I noticed right away, patterns that were emerging. All shots with the hydro prep were pretty much always slightly faster than the shots with the standard tamper, which makes sense. We talked about earlier that there are going to be different properties using the hydro prep tamper versus a standard one. Hydro prep even states on their website, experiment with a finer grind and lower pressure. Also because of that faster time, we had lower extraction percentages overall using the hydro prep, which again, that makes sense given everything that we know. So even though those numbers are lower on average, that doesn't really affect our results in the end. Another thing I noticed that doesn't really matter for the experiment we did today, but is just interesting is that as we decreased the amount of distribution methods, so going from tapping chisel distribution and tamping to just straight tamping, our average extraction levels actually went up which still doesn't really make sense to me because the whole point of distribution methods is to even out our density so we get a more even extraction all around. And I would think that with less distribution, we'd have more channeling, so a lower extraction level. There's a couple reasons that that could have been that have been described to me. And on top of that, if you have any thoughts of what could be going on there, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what all of y'all have to say. So now finally, let's take a look at the 
charts and see what the data will show us. So what we're actually looking at here is we have two sets of graphs. We have the average extraction percentage. So taking the mean average of all the extractions in a given data set. And then we also have the standard deviations within those data sets. So basically saying how consistent are those numbers with one another. Like I said earlier, those sets one and set two, which were the same distribution, but just different group heads, the top graphs are going to be those kept separate and then the bottom are combined. Now, the reason I did that is because if we look at the standard deviation side, you can see that when we combine the data sets, the standard deviations are actually quite higher than they should be. And that's because of what I mentioned earlier, how I zeroed the refractometer and that kind of threw everything off. They were so much different from one another that when we combine them, we get a much higher standard deviation. Whereas we look at the first two sets separated, they're actually both lower than set three. So finally, let's answer some questions that I wanted to look at from the very beginning. First off, is there any significant change in consistency from shot to shot using the hydro prep versus a standard tamper? And in order to answer that, we look at these standard deviation graphs. And what we would wanna look at here is, is the standard deviation in a data set lower for the hydro prep than the standard tamper, which equals consistency. And if we look at the graphs, that is the case, which that is very true if we look at the last set. So that was no distribution at all, just going straight from the grinder to tamping. The standard tamper had a huge range of values, whereas even though the consistency went up with the hydro prep, it didn't shoot up like the standard tamper. It still stayed relatively low, slightly higher than if we did some distribution, but not as bad as the standard tamper. So in conclusion, looking at these standard deviation graphs, I would say that the hydro prep was more consistent than the standard tamper. And my guess would be that if we had a lot more data, that would still be the case. I know that I don't have a lot, but just looking at this, we can see that there was a difference. The other thing I wanted to look at from earlier in the video was whether there would be any major differences in distribution. And if we just go from palm tapping plus distribution with the distribution tool to removing that distribution tool, there wasn't a huge difference there. The extraction levels went up slightly and so did the inconsistencies, but not that much. But going up to the zero distribution methods, like I mentioned earlier, the standard tamper, that just skyrocketed with inconsistency and the hydroprep, even though it went up, it didn't go up as much. So that just validates what hydroprep is saying on their website, that you don't necessarily need all this distribution that we're going through having to use a standard tamper. Now, the last thing I wanted to use this experiment for was to compare the visuals of shots pulling with the hydro prep versus the standard tamper. And that was because as soon as I started using this tamper just at home with my espresso machine, I started to notice a couple things that I really wanted to see if they were true. And the first thing that I was noticing was that as I was pulling espresso with a naked portafilter, so you can see the espresso coming out of the basket, over the course of a shot, we have multiple streams of flow that usually merge into one stream. And that is usually a sign of less channeling happening in your espresso. And I felt like that as soon as I started using this, that flow was merging into a single stream just more often than a standard tamper. And the other thing I noticed, and this one was kind of weird, but I felt like the flow or the stream coming out of that basket was less shaky. And I'll kind of throw some footage up here. You can see that sometimes that flow of espresso can kind of be wavering around a little bit and not necessarily a fast, straight stream. And I felt like the espresso with the hydro prep was just straighter. And I'm not really sure what that would mean. My assumption would be, again, that there would be less channeling, but I just wanted to see what would happen. And sure enough, after reviewing every single one of the shots pulled for this experiment, I found both of my initial suspicions to be true. First off, on average, the espresso coming out using the hydro prep was more consistently forming into a single flow. And also looking at that weird wavering thing, yes, shots with the hydro prep were less wavy 
than with the standard tamper. And so I think what both of those things indicate to me at least is that there was less channeling on average with the hydroprep which that's great to hear and it kind of confirms a lot of things that hydroprep is saying about this hydroforming tamper. So really quick, I'm gonna give some conclusions on my experiment if you just skipped past all of my hard work that I did just to view this part. First off, the hydroprep did increase consistency uh, from shot to shot versus consistency using the standard tamper. Second, based on the visuals of those shots pulling, the hydroprep most likely had less channeling on average than shots using the standard tamper. Now that is everything I gathered from this experiment. Hopefully some of it was helpful for you. If you have any suggestions of how I could do things like this in the future, please let me know. It was my first time doing anything sort of scientific on this channel, so I would love your input on how all of that went. Now let's move on from data and talk about actual real life use of this tamper because there's so much more to a product like this than just the data that it provides. And we'll start off by talking about some good things. And first off, it feels really nice. It feels hefty. It weighs a good amount, about 240.5 grams versus this tamper is 326 grams, which this is one of the heavier tampers I've used. So this has some nice weight to it. And when I first received this, I was really worried about this gel pad right here. I just, I felt like it was going to puncture and break and everything, but upon further inspection, and once I finally figured out that you can actually remove this whole base here and take a look at the gel pad, I felt a lot better about using this and that this wouldn't just all of a sudden puncture on me. Now, Prep does say a lot on their site that you should be careful with say hot water hitting this a bunch. You don't wanna be you know, washing this in really hot water or anything like that. And also you probably don't wanna take like a knife or a needle to this and just poke it. It is a gel covered with a film, so it's not like a bunch of stuff will start spilling out. But all that being said, I felt better about using this frequently and that it won't break on me. But going right from that onto the negative things of using this tamper, with this gel pad, Hydroprep recommends leaving this sitting upright like this, which I think for a home user, for someone using this not as frequently, that's totally fine. But I think for a cafe setting, that would be very difficult, especially with these metal sides. And like, what if this just so happened to hit something slightly sharp and puncture it, then it would be ruined until you can get a replacement. So that's one sort of downside. Now the biggest negative with this design, and I think something that would deter a lot of people from purchasing it, is that this gel pad obviously doesn't extend all the way to the sides of the tamper. We have this metal ring here that, at least for me, was hitting the espresso puck. Now, Prep claims on their website that along with this pad pushing down on the coffee, it should extend outward all the way to the ends. That was not the case for me. Every time I used this, the metal sides of this were hitting the coffee bed. So I would have these, you know, slight bumps around the edges and that's not really great. Sort of my final thoughts on the Hydro Prep. Well, I think that this is a really important product that is continuing the push for gradually and gradually improving our espresso. And I think that this product provides a lot of potential, but potential is the main word here because I'm not sure that this product is completely ready for the mass market. In order to get there, I think first off, we need some improvements to the design here. This gel pad does not extend to the sides of a basket for me. And I think that is a necessity, especially in this day and age where people are focusing on every little thing to get the best espresso possible. And then the last thing they need to improve on is the accessibility of this, which I didn't mention this earlier, but it costs about $56 including shipping, but that shipping is coming from Germany. So it took about three weeks for it to reach my door and I was never really sure when it would arrive or how. And along with that, if these gel pads were more accessible because right now, they make a lot of claims that it shouldn't break. It will take a lot for it to break, but if it does, you kind of just have to reach out to them and I'm sure they'll work out something to get one to you, but it is not easy. And if this is your, you know, your main tamper, 
you don't want that to break and have to wait a few more weeks to get a replacement part. But all that being said, if they were able to fix the gel pad reaching the edges of a basket and make it more accessible to everyone, I think that this has huge potential for increasing the consistency and therefore hopefully quality of our espressos going forward. So thank you so much for watching all this video. If you followed along with all the experiments, I really appreciate that. Let me know any questions, any thoughts, any, any things about the hydro prep in the comments down below. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about what the potential of a product like this could be. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy brewing.